Hello, it's your friend Sarmate here with another Kingdoms Reborn episode. This is number eight on our Desert Dwelling Challenge. I hope you're having a great day and thanks for coming and hanging out with me today. In this episode, we're going to talk about a couple more mid-game things and stuff just to prep before our new colony. We're going to be worried about some sickness things. I just had that wave happen, so I want to talk about that a little bit. And in our case, some non-wood food um, options. And then we'll get into the colonization a little bit. The sickness thing... I had a big wave of everybody getting sick because I didn't have enough of our uh, medicinal herbs, obviously. And I also just reached the medicine makers, and I have two, and I might need to do a couple bit, a couple more to um, to help us out with that. Um, I did supplement with a big trade of medicines, and you can see there were barely in the green, so I might have to do that again. Uh, so that's something to keep in mind as you're growing. You know, you have your farms, and the farms are so important. You need they grow food, they grow the herbs, they grow the luxury items with with the beer and uh, the vodka as well. They're tricky, but make sure you have enough of them. They take up a lot of space and a lot of workers, but they're very very important. You could have your whole town collapse if you uh, ignore them for too long, or you have a misbalance. Uh, and then I was working on our food because I was trying to increase our population and. Of course, I had neglected to consider how much wood I was taking up with all of the mushroom farms that I was building. If you saw the last episode, we were built a couple in here. Well, I tried to put a couple more in here, and then I realized that I had zero wood and I wasn't gaining anymore because we don't, we're so limited on the wood that I was just burning it up between the farms, uh, the mushroom farms, and our furniture makers. Uh, if you don't know, the mushroom farms require wood to grow the mushrooms, you know? because mushrooms will grow on decaying wood, and that's where that comes from. So that's why that's there. But I figured a, another little way around that, and that is with our coal. See, we're, we're making... I saw this over here, We had, and I noticed that we have a ton of extra coal. 6,000 currently. And so I had this guy over here, the trading company, and I was like, well, I have such an excess of coal, why don't I just export it? So I set up the export to 5,000. It's pretty good. I'm obviously... You know, 15, 1400 over still. And then, since it's automatic, it's super nice. I've got a second one. And over here, I'm importing wood. So now, you had to make sure that you're exporting... Your exports are earning you more gold than what you're spending on your imports. So you can see 1184 there on that guy was my export. And that's how much gold I got for, bring, for selling my coal. And then the import on our wood is got to be less, and I think it's about a thousand. We'll see that here in just a sec if I catch it in time. All right, and a couple of non-wood options that we can do here in the desert, because we do have the savanna so close, is we can do ranches. And I think ranches are going to be more powerful than I'm giving them credit for right now. I have a pig ranch queued up, you can see here, and in the savanna we can build these, but in the desert we cannot build these. So I'm going to utilize all of the savanna land that I have up here for the ranches. Could maybe squeak in some farms, but I'm going to use it for the ranches. And if you notice, I went through and I made everything stone roads. So now we have a very high class fashionable town and there's stone roads everywhere. And uh, so we got that one ranch going over here. Another option that you can use is fisheries, of course. And I do have a few fisheries around town here. Uh, fishing lodge. There's, I think I have three or four, uh, but they don't use any wood, so they're great to have. They're just, you know, they're just bringing in food. And then, of course, the farms themselves don't use any wood. They, you know, they take up a lot of space, yada, 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 we talked about it already. I wanted to make another colony. I went about that in the tech tree, so I got the Logistics 5 and the Intercity Connection and the colonization over here. I went to go and pick the new spot because I was like, oh, let's go over here, you know, and, and make the new home with the wood, obviously, because we're going to need it. Well, another problem that I had that I didn't know was going to pop up is you can only be so far away with a regular old colony on the ground, so this isn't going to fit over here. So that says max 500 tiles from my original town hall. So that's not going to work, but there's a way around that. And the reason why I built... Where is it right here? No, that's a paper maker. Oh, I was going to do it with you. We need to have a port, a trading port, and we're going to do that right here. So once the trading port happens, I hope, because this isn't actually an ocean, it's just a big lake, this should let us come down here and do a port colony that once the dock faces water. Oh, I think I have to do it up here. Look at that. So that would work right there. So you need the 20,000 gold for the actual port right here, 20,000. 
and then that said whatever the province uh province price would be and i can't see that from here it looks like but you could see that when i went like this 210 coins so that's going to be in the next episode so if you want to see the steps that i'm going to take to do a new little colony and i'm going to call that a daughter colony you have to come back into the next episode and hang out with me and watch me do that you know we're just, i'm just trying to get some of the luxury items worked out we're doing okay with food now because of those things that I had mentioned a little bit ago, like uh, the non-wood items and the balancing of the exports and imports right here with the trading companies. So if you're not using these or you don't have them yet, keep those in mind to help you with balancing any resources that you don't have access to. Um, or just a good way to get extra luxury items as well. I did expand a bunch more farms out here as well. I will absolutely, in that green area at the top there, put more farms in there. Uh, pretty soon probably and then I think I'm pretty much maxed out over here yeah it looks like it so that might be a problem as well might have to get a little bit more creative and figure out a way to uh, do more farmland oh and speaking of which remember that I was super obsessed with that irrigation reservoir well I was sadly disappointed because if we go here while it's true the fertility did go up, it didn't it didn't make it so that trees would grow here. This is within the radius of the forester, and it's been it's been quite a while. So if this was gonna plant trees, it would have planted it by uh, in here by now. And you see you can see here I have cut and plant, and it just it doesn't do anything. So that stinks. That's unfortunate. Uh, but this will allow me to put a big farm right in here. So I'm gonna probably do that as well at some point and just utilize that a little bit more. I'll probably put a couple more reservoirs in here to push out farmland into this area as well. And let's go over here and check out our statistics and see if we have any buildings that aren't um, being operated. The immigration office I did turn off because of the food problem that I was having. But it looks like just about everything else. I don't see any zeros in here. Oh, there's an iron mine. I wonder if that's depleted. Can be depleted. I don't see any zeros in here, so that's pretty good. Uh, that means everything's working as it should, and we should be able to put some more things in, and they will be occupied. So let's... Oh, that must be the iron mine that I have turned off here. Because I was having a similar, I'm not really an issue, but same thing as with the coal, I was having a big stockpile of iron ore, and uh, it, I, mean, I just didn't need it. So I turned it off so I could use those people elsewhere. Okay, so we got piggies growing over here. That's pretty nice. Um, I'm going to probably buy another wild card of the pig ranch uh just because just because we're gonna need the food if we have more people coming in i'm gonna extend this road out because that's what that road's gonna be and i'll probably just get rid of that oops probably just get rid of that everything else is doing pretty well i did use up a bunch of stone obviously from the stone roads everywhere but that's okay i like the look of it better and uh if you don't know stone roads plus 10 percent movement speed over the dirt road so it's a little bit, but you know, a little bit helps, and I want it, so that's what we're going to do. So the next item that we're going to need to develop to advance our buildings, our industry, is going to be glass. So what you need to do for glass is, of course, you need to have some silicate. In this case, that's going to be sand mines. We are going to just use up our little area that we have over here for our sand mines. And we're going to have that get built in a little bit here, and then you're going to need a glass smelter. So we're going to need sand and coal, so obviously we just put the sand mine in there and we have an abundance of coal as we were just talking about. So I'm going to go ahead and put that guy right next door and then that's going to be built in a little bit here and I'll put a little uh, warehouse next door by it as well and that's going to just be the, um, the drop point for the goods. I'm going to put in another one too just for, for uh, productivity sake and put it right next door and then everybody's all grouped up right there and that's going to be fantastic and amazing. And then once that gets online, then we can start getting our upgrade enlightenment age level for our industry buildings. And they just get better and better over time when you do that. Uh, eventually, you can have them be electric, which is pretty cool. And the final line of the glass uh, industrial uh, tier, I guess, or tree, is the glassworks. Glassworks is going to be um, an end game luxury item, and it looks like it's going to fit right there. So I have all my glass is going to be right in this area, and it's just going to keep everything close by. Coal's right here. It's going to be super easy to produce that glass, hopefully. And we should have enough 
people all nearby to reach that. We'll see once it gets built if uh, if it can't be populated. Another problem we're having is we're losing a lot of people uh, and we're not gaining as many as we should. Oh, because I still have this off. For, for Pete's sake. Okay, now I have that back on. I thought it was working, but whatever, apparently not. Okay, so that's going to start fixing our population problem. And yeah, when we have the other colony, we can start to bounce cable back and forth between uh, the mother colony and the daughter colony. And that's going to be awesome. It's going to help. It's it's nice. It helps to develop the little the littler colony quicker, and it keeps the population and stuff under control in the bigger colony, which is great. Uh, for when we do our port colony, I, I think I like this spot over here the most. We'll park it somewhere in here because we'll get the gold, which we do have on the continent on the other side, but we don't have any canvas. So these two, these two regions right here are going to be super, super key for that colony. And uh, speaking of which, we will do that in the next episode. And if you want to catch that, come back and I'll walk you through how I build a little new colony. And that's going to be sweet. So I hope to see you on that episode of Kingdoms Reborn. And I hope you have a great rest of your day. Thanks for hanging out with me. Hope to see you again.